on occasion, I have disclosed <laughs> some of my sources where I will actually go and purchase seeds that I use here on the farm, um, or in the past, places I've used. Well, with the drought in the West, it seems as if maybe at least one of the sources that I've historically used may now be far more important than it ever was. I'm not sure how many of you gardeners out there or farmers have heard of native seed search. They're from Tucson, uh, Arizona. And they specialize in uh, gathering up the uh, crops that had historically been used by uh, native southwestern pueblos. Um, and they also work into uh, Mexico, too. And so they have gathered a huge amount of crops that are actually desert adapted and have been desert adapted in some cases for thousands of years. Now, of course, you know, <clears throat> uh, our modern society today, well, we could, mm, I don't know, genetically engineer sorghum genes into a corn stalk, imparting more uh, drought resistance, you know, or something like that. We could go about attempting to try to work on hybrid corns that were based on some of the uh, ancient land races that had drought adapted genes. Um, this is always possible but you know all that takes a lot of time messing around and so on and the truth is is that we already have crops that are well adapted to the conditions in the southwestern United States um, that will tolerate drought and grow well uh, even yet today you know now it's most likely that it was climate change that probably put an end to uh, a number of the Pueblo cultures. And for instance, the Anasazi. Nobody really knows what happened to the Anasazi. They're still wondering about that. Um, I know I have visited uh, a, a number of different uh, cliff dwelling communities in Arizona where the, uh, the cultures that had once been there uh, are now gone. Now, some of that had to do probably with the fact that the weather changed on them and the crops they were raising didn't raise very well anymore. In the case of the Anasazi, that's probably what happened. But anyway, great place to start. If you got a garden down there in Arizona where everything's burning and there's no rain, you got a, uh, a garden in California where there's no rain and it's burning, Nevada, Utah, you know, Texas, on and on, uh, any of these places, you might want to look at Native Seed Search. Seed isn't all they sell. It's a very interesting organization. It is a nonprofit, actually, I believe. Um, I know in the past I've uh, purchased you know, little uh, Native American curios from them that they had. I know I got Ellen a set of uh, corn cob earrings that were Indian corn with uh, deer skin for the for the husk and so on. Uh, they were really cute. They were beaded, you know, little tiny beads, looked like corn. Um, of course, as usually goes with earrings, she lost one, so she only has one of them. I've not ever been able to replace them. Um, oh, I know, I used to get Hatch New Mexico chili powder from these guys. Oh, when I lived in uh, in New in uh, Wisconsin and also in uh, California, I'd get it from them. I don't know anybody out there who's uh, ever experienced the chilies from Hatch. You know, they are special. Wow, they are so special, some of the best. And hey, and I've tried to take that seed and grown it in many different places in the past, and it never comes out the same as when it comes from Hatch. So, <laughs> I give up, I buy it from them. <laughs> so Native Seed Search has sold that in the past. They have, they have a number of unusual things that they've sold. I haven't looked lately, I don't know what's there. But seed in the his history is not the only thing. Um, I highly recommend them. I'm going to post their website link in the text below the video here uh, so you can get to them. Another uh, seed company that I've used for years and years, I guess probably longest standing relationship with a seed firm 
Yeah, Johnny selected seeds. Yep. Johnny's, uh, um, they were one of the first and the original only organic seed companies at one time in the U.S. So going back to the 1970s, that's how I first got involved with them. Uh, but they were also located in Albion, Maine, and I was in northern Wisconsin, south of Lake Superior, where the climate wasn't that much different. And so the varieties that Johnny's had selected in Albion tended to raise pretty well in, in northern Wisconsin. And so I got real fond of those guys. Now, of course, Johnny's get seeds from all over the place. And uh, one of the things that they... Uh, um, uh, introduced me to actually was two varieties of Hawaiian lettuce okay well in Wisconsin I used to raise Anue Nue and Manoa uh, and I got them through Johnny's originally they were bred by the University of Hawaii in Manoa and they're very popular lettuce here but uh, yeah I started growing that through Johnny's when in Wisconsin um, now just because their seed a lot of it was well adapted to the northern tier when I moved to California, I continued using their seeds because that wasn't the only thing they did. And one thing that was special with Johnny's, they did trials for taste and quality. Not everybody who sells seeds does that. And they have trial gardens where they put that stuff out, they raise it, you know, everybody tries it out and they decide what they think of it and so on. And if it isn't any good, they don't keep it in the listing. And so generally speaking what you will get from them is some of the highest quality flavor and and aroma and appearance in vegetables yep they got good stuff if you like taste uh, it's none of them plastic tomatoes like you get in the supermarket yeah I recommend them uh, that and not long back um, Johnny who ran the place there uh, Robert Robert Johnson, I think was his name. I don't know. Anyway, you know, he decided that he was going to uh, uh, give the company to the employees, and so it's an employee-owned business. Hey, I mean, wow! How much better can you get? They trial the seeds to see that the food is quality. They sell organic seed uh, when they can. Okay, they have both these days, uh, and uh, and it's employee-owned. Wow, <laughs> pretty good. I'd go there. If you haven't used them, do so. Um, they're on the web and they're also in paper catalogs, you know. Um, and finally, as I said, even when I was living back in Wisconsin years ago, I was actually raising uh, some Hawaiian lettuce varieties because of Johnny's. But later, after traveling here in the islands, I became familiar with Hawaiian super sweet corn. Ah, oh, I never had anything that good. <laughs> it's true. So I began uh, growing Hawaiian super sweet in California. Uh, I would buy the seeds here and bring them back with me. Uh, but I also raised uh, Manoa and Anui Nui uh, in California, too. Uh, and I, got a, I also got a lot of my good seed out of Johnny's from them in, in California. But uh, I brought some of it from Hawaii. Uh, now, here in Hawaii, the Hawaiian adapted seed becomes particularly important uh, because not everything likes to grow here. And so, uh, you know, like the poa moho bean, for instance, one of the few string beans I found that will kind of go for a while around here. Most of them die due to nematodes and funguses early. It's like Johnny's has my favorite string bean on earth, Fortex from France. It's the finest. But Vortex hates Hawaii. It can't stand this place. It's so sad because I've raised it in numerous places before. I've had Vortex with me for years. but I, It's not worth it anymore. So I raised Pomoho from the University of Hawaii. Uh, the corn, outstanding. They have some adapted tomato varieties, peppers, and so on. You can get the solo papayas if you want. The, gen the GMO papayas, they have those too. But I know none of you are looking for that stuff. But uh, I have quite a list of seeds. And uh, again, I'll post that 
down there in the text below. Uh, it's a little unusual because they are online, the seeds are listed online, and the order form is online. But you have to print the order form out, fill it out with a ballpoint pen, put a check or a credit card number in there, put a stamp on an envelope and mail it to the guy uh, that, that does this. Um, I'm sure he's still there. I haven't talked to him for a couple of years, but he's a nice old gentleman. You can get him on the phone periodically. He'll talk to you. Uh, we've discussed things, and uh, he's just not, <laughs> they're not right up there with the computer age as far as being able to fill out that order form online. That you can't do with them. But they're well worth it. They have some great stuff, and especially if you live here, you should be using this because. You know, that seed is available otherwise here on the island. You know, you can buy it through one of the local seed baggers, Aina Ola from uh, Honoka. Uh, you can buy it from Garden Exchange over here in uh, Manila Envelopes where they'll buy a pound or two and then rebag the seed in the store and resell it for you. Uh, you know, so you, you can get at that stuff. But you to pay a whole lot more for it than you will if you go straight to the university. Um, the university prices are insane. Okay, when was the last time you bought a good package of seed for a buck and a half? Hmm. I mean, really? Uh, they're nuts. Uh, and there's really no minimum order. Uh, they charge you the shipping for gardeners is the price of one seed package. So you put a buck and a half on there to ship, and and most of the seed is you know somewhere around a buck and a half, two bucks. It's cheap. And that is good. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Isn't that right, Gracie? Cheap and good. Just like that uh, little Friskies, right? Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, Gracie's hanging around. It's raining out here. She don't want to get wet. She's been hanging around me all morning long. We went on and weeded uh, some of the Miley out of the pineapples when I was... Uh, gathering slips and oh she loves to chase the miley vines they they get long you know and i'll grab them by the root start pulling but eight feet away somewhere the tip is moving and she'll chase that tip boy she just loves that she's a weeder cat um i had a gentleman over here the other day who came and uh, and picked up all the pineapple tops i had by the way at that particular moment um there are more now but uh, uh well, he had questions about pineapples. We walked out in the field to have a look, you know. Well, Gracie'd been out, and so Gracie follows us up the hill. Walks around through the pineapples the whole time I'm talking. We turn around, we come back down the hill. Gracie chases us back down the hill. This guy was astounded. He says, your cat, it follows you everywhere like a dog. I said, yeah, we had suspicions at one time that, that she may have been raised by dogs. <laughs> we don't know. Uh, but, yeah, she has that activity where she, you know, she follows her people everywhere. Um, it doesn't matter really whether it's me or Ellen, although she does like following me because I weed more. <laughs> but, yeah. She <laughs> so, anyway. This is all about seeds. I just threw the cat on the end for you kitten people out there who wanted to hear the latest. Yep, and the local guys were amazed <laughs> by how much Gracie follows us around here, just like a little puppy dog. I'll admit, it's one of the endearing qualities about that cat. Aloha. Y'all have a good one. Hang loose.